Welcome to Module 1.4, Emerging Variants of SARS-CoV-2. This presentation is a part of the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit from CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection. My name is Dr. Michael Wiegand, and I am a bioinformatician with the CDC. This module is a part of our Introduction to Genomic Epidemiology and the Genome of SARS-CoV-2. Be sure to check out the toolkit's other modules, which include a combination of training materials and case studies to help you get started supplementing epidemiology with genome sequence data. In module 1.2, we introduced some basic features of the SARS-CoV-2 genome, shown here with a simple schematic in which varied colors indicate different genes encoded within the roughly 30,000 RNA nucleotides. A single copy of this linear RNA genome is packaged inside every SARS-CoV-2 viral particle. Mutations occur within the genome as viruses spread among susceptible hosts, producing a genetic fingerprint that can be used for phylogenetics and thus genomic epidemiology. Importantly, this process of mutation accumulation is never ending, leading to distinct divisions within the global SARS-CoV-2 population. Genomic researchers refer to these subgroups as clades or lineages, each of which is defined by a specific collection of mutations in the viral genome. Nomenclature describing these divisions is an active and fluid area of development. The figure here lists three current systems and the overlaps among them. In all three systems, names are applied to divisions within the phylogeny to facilitate scientific communication rather than indicate any significant differences in viral properties or disease characteristics. It's within this context that we begin to recognize specific variants of SARS-CoV-2. The term variant broadly means genetically distinct, and so any mutation or phylogenetic cluster of mutations can be called a variant simply because it deviates from the reference or background viral genome sequence. The term has been applied to SARS-CoV-2 to describe specific clades or lineages of closely related viruses defined by their collection of mutations, usually a set of so-called defining mutations while still permitting some small amount of variation. For example, B117 is defined by a collection of mutations occurring throughout the genome and highlighted in the diagram here. But the label variant can also refer to specific mutations usually that cause amino acid substitutions, which may be recurrent and independent of the rest of the genome sequence. Most early attention has been paid to mutations within the spike protein, which is responsible for host receptor binding and is also targeted by vaccines. Some examples are listed here, named for the amino acid substitution and position in the spike protein sequence. Note that we'll avoid using the term strain in our discussion here although you'll likely hear it used in popular media. There are no hard and fast rules for defining strains of pathogenic microbes, but typically strain classification is reserved for variant clades or lineages when they become sufficiently divergent to exhibit distinct behavior or epidemiology. Throughout this module, we'll stick to simply calling these variants, but be aware that SARS-CoV-2 nomenclature remains an active area of development. Because vir variant definition can be based on either lineage or specific mutations, their assigned names can look very different and often reflect the motivation behind their recognition. Mixing of name conventions gets confusing and it helps if you can recognize the origin of the name when discussing a particular variant. For example, a widely publicized variant was first reported in the UK in late 2020 and can be described by any of these three names here. Most common among them is probably its Pango lineage name, B117, which is derived from a hierarchical scheme using successive characters to indicate where the lineage resides in the global SARS-CoV-2 phylogeny. Think of it like an address to its location in the tree, as illustrated here on the right. But be aware that other analogous names might also be used to describe this same variant. All three of those listed here refer to the same lineage and its full collection of defining mutations. Alternatively, some variants are named for one specific defining mutation, 
such as L452R, which references an amino acid substitution at position 452 in the spike protein. Although researchers assign such names based on mutations of interest, these variants often still represent clades within the phylogenetic tree defined by a genetic fingerprint of many mutations. All variants start out rare because they are the product of random mutation, and many stay that way. Others, however, attract attention by reaching high frequency or expanding rapidly in a particular region. The transmission dynamics underlying a variant's increase in frequency can be fueled by epidemiology or virus phenotype. Those variants expanding due to altered viral properties, such as increased transmissibility, are the ones we're most concerned with identifying. Of course, shifts in relative frequency are expected in any evolving pathogen population and are only detectable with sufficient genomic surveillance. The speed and drivers of high frequency variants factor into decisions to recognize them with labels such as variant of interest. Keep in mind that lineages of SARS-CoV-2 can increase in frequency through human, human behavior alone. The virus spreads through human contact and more quickly among socially mixing populations. The introduction and subsequent spread of the virus in a new population can result in a rapid increase in frequency. The population genetic term for this is the founder effect in which a new local virus population is seeded by a small number of individuals. The resulting population has little genetic diversity, giving the appearance of rapid spread of a specific variant. An example of such epidemiologically driven growth was observed during the 2020 summer season as European vacation travel facilitated spread of a particular variant. Named 20AEU1 and later renamed 20E, the variant spread across many countries, often through multiple introductions as vacationers returned home and subsequently became the most predominant variant in Europe by the fall. The spread of 20AEU1 and investigation of potential phenotypes associated with its mutations were described in the preprint listed here and on the toolkit webpage. The first recognized variant of SARS-CoV-2 actually emerged in early 2020, named for its defining mutation D614G, which refers to the amino acid substitution from aspartic acid, abbreviated D, to glycine at position 614 on the spike protein sequence. This variant appeared as the virus spread through Europe and then North America, becoming globally dominant. It was initially unclear if the spread of D614G was due to a founder effect, but subsequent laboratory research has suggested that this mutation increases viral load and subsequent transmission to secondary cases. Some variants get our attention because they feature defining mutations that are observed multiple times across the global SARS-CoV-2 phylogeny. The general phylogenetic term to describe this phenomenon is homoplasy, which refers to the observation of a mutation in multiple parts of the tree that don't share a common ancestor. Often, this can be interpreted as convergent evolution, suggesting that the mutation has appeared multiple times because it confers a beneficial property to the virus. One example is the frequent mutation of spike protein to, at position 501. This tree on the right highlights three separate mutations at position 501 to tyrosine, abbreviated Y. Although each of these three variants has a clade or lineage derived name also listed here, it can be useful to instead describe them by this shared spike mutation. These three variants are not phylogenetically close related, but exhibit similar properties because mutation at this site is believed to increase host receptor binding during infection. Some variants may warrant elevated labels to indicate particular importance to public health, such as variant of interest or variant under investigation or even variant of concern. At this time, formal criteria for classifying SARS-CoV-2 variants into such categories are still being debated among researchers and public health institutions. In general, these variants are flagged because they exhibit concerning epidemiological, immunological, 
or pathogenic characteristics. These include observations introduced earlier in this module, such as rapid expansion or particular mutations linked to altered viral properties, some of which may appear multiple times in the population. Please refer to the resources provided with this module on the toolkit webpage for updated information on such variant classifications. This toolkit focuses on genomic epidemiology, and so it's worth asking what impact the emergence of new variants has on using sequence data to support public health investigation. Fortunately, when applying genetic fingerprinting to investigate transmission, the basic principles described in the introductory modules of this toolkit still apply. Phylogeny still approximates epidemiology and viral sequence data can still be used to infer linkages among cases infected by new variants. However, some mutations or perhaps combinations of mutations may alter viral properties. And so variant identification by genome sequencing becomes another powerful tool to inform epidemiologic investigation. For example, these data could be used to prioritize control measures like contact tracing or patient isolation. If the identified variant is known to cause more secondary cases through increased transmissibility. To summarize, continued transmission and replication of SARS-CoV-2 naturally results in the emergence of new variants through mutation. These variants may not impact genomic epidemiology, but do highlight the broader importance of genomic surveillance for detecting any variants that may, for example, spread more rapidly, increase disease severity, or even evade vaccine-induced immunity. In practice, genomic surveillance often allows detection of new mutations and variants before any such impact on the virus or disease can be determined. This is intended as an introductory module to provide useful background information regarding the emergence of new variants, not in-depth description of specific variants. This is an area of active investigation and SARS-CoV-2 nomenclature remains fluid and at times confusing. Please remember to refer to the resources provided with this module on the toolkit webpage for updated information. It is possible to quickly identify variant defining mutations or lineages by uploading an assembled SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence to either the Pangolin or Nextclade web portals using the links provided here and on the toolkit webpage. Both are updated regularly to include new variants as they are identified. This concludes module 1.4. Part two of this toolkit contains studies that review the use of genomics in response to COVID-19. Please visit the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit page where you can find further reading on this topic. On the toolkit page, you can also subscribe to our mailing list and receive announcements as new modules and materials are released. Thank you.